Hello again. This is lesson 4.2 and we're going to learn about a new classifier, the attribute selected classifier. So just imagine this. We're going to open a data set, glass.arf, and uh, apply J48, see what we get. And then we're going to use wrapper attribute selection with J48. And we're going to see what attributes that gives us. Then we're going to use just those attributes and run classification with J48 again on the new data set. Let's go over to Weka and try it. I've got uh, the glass data open here. I'm going to classify it with J48 with default parameters. And I get 67%. Then I'm going to go to attribute selection. I'm going to use the wrapper method. And uh, within the wrapper method, I'm going to choose J48. I'm going to leave everything else at its default value and see what attributes I get. And we get the attribute set R-I-M-G-A-L-K-B-A. -A. So I'm going to go back R-I-M-G-A-L-K-B-A. -A. R-I-M-G-A-L-K-B-A. -A. Delete the rest. And now I've got just that uh, set R-I-M-G-A-L-K-B-A. -A. I'm going to classify it again with J48. And I get better accuracy, 71%. Just going to go back and undo that filter. OK, so back to the slide here. Uh, I got uh, improved accuracy. If I did the same thing with IBK, I'd get 71% uh, just for IBK on the glass data set, and 78% if I used just the attributes selected by wrapper attribute selection using IBK. And the question is, is this cheating? And the answer is, yes, it certainly is. And the reason is because we're using the entire data set to decide on the attribute subset. And we should really just use the training data to decide on all of those things and then test the final result on the test set. So this is just what the attribute selected classifier does. Remember the filtered classifier we used for supervised discretization? Well, the attribute selected classifier is the analogous thing for attribute selection. It selects attributes based on the training data only, even if we're within a cross-validation. And then it trains the classifier again on the training data only, and then it evaluates the whole thing on the test data. So I'm going to use that to wrap J48 and see what I get. It's a little bit complex to set up. I'm going to get uh, the attribute selected classifier from the meta. I'm going to use the J48 classifier. I'm going to use the wrapper subset evaluator. And within that, I get to choose a classifier to wrap for attribute selection. And I could choose any classifier. I don't have to choose J48 again, but I will. I'm going to use J48 both for attribute selection and for classification. Leave everything else at its default value and run it again. It's finished now, and I get an accuracy of 72%. So back on the slide, this is not cheating. Actually, it's slightly surprising that I get a higher accuracy, 72%, when I'm not cheating than I did the 71% I got when I was cheating. But, you know, we should really use the experimenter to get reliable results. This is just the result of one run here. If I were to do the same thing with IBK, I got a dramatic improvement on IBK by using the correct attributes, that's 78%. If I then use the, by cheating, that is, if I then use the attribute selected classifier, well, of course, I can decide what I'm going to wrap. So if I was using IBK, then I'd probably want to select attributes using IBK. So that would give me the figure of 71% at the bottom right. Of course, I can use a different uh, classifier to do the attribute selection than the one I'm using for classification. So if I use the 69% the figure as when I wrap IBK, do attribute selection using IBK, and then classify using J48. And the 74% is when I do attribute selection using J48 and uh, then classify using IBK. And it's slightly surprising. You would expect 
that you'd get a better attribute subset by using the classifier that you're going to be using for classification. So it's slightly surprising to see that 74% coming in larger than the 71% figure. But you know, surprising things happen, and if we did a more extensive run with the experimenter, we probably wouldn't uh, find that. So I'm going to check the effectiveness of the attribute selected classifier for getting rid of redundant attributes. I'm going to open the diabetes data set, and uh, I'm going to uh, use the attribute selected classifier with naive Bayes. Remember with naive Bayes, when you add redundant attributes, the performance na of naive Bayes gets worse. So I'm going to add redundant attributes, copies of attributes, and uh, then I'm going to use the attribute selected classifier and see if the performance still gets worse. And I'm hoping it doesn't. The attribute selected classifier should get rid of those redundant copied attributes. Uh, so I'm going to open diabetes, and uh, I'm going to use the attribute selected classifier, and I'll just do this one more time because configuration is, takes a bit of thought. I'm going to use as my classifier naive Bayes, and I'm going to use the wrapper subset evaluator. And within that, I'm going to choose as the classifier to wrap, I'm going to choose naive Bayes again. I don't have to, but it's probably better to use the same classifier. I'm going to leave everything else at its default value. And uh, let's run that. And here I get uh, 75, 76% accuracy, 75.7%. OK, back in the slide then. Uh, so if I just ran naive Bayes on the diabetes data set, I would get 76.3%. Uh, using the attribute selection in the proper way, that is not cheating with the attribute selected classifier, I get 75.7. Uh, you know, it's a little bit disappointing that attribute selection didn't help much on this data set. But let's now copy the attribute. So I'm going to copy the first attribute, naive base gives me 75.7. And the attribute classifier also gives me 75.7. If I add a bunch more copies of that attribute, nine further copies, then the performance of naive base deteriorates 68.9%. Whereas the attribute selected classifier stays the same because it's uh, resistant to these uh, redundant attributes. And if I add further copies, then naive base will slowly get worse and worse and worse, whereas the attribute selected classifier continues at its standard level of 75.7%. So the conclusion is that attribute selection does a good job of removing redundant attributes. So uh, in this lesson, we've looked at the attribute selected classifier, which selects attributes based on the training set only, which is the right way to do it. Uh, in the activity, you're going to use uh, some other classifier, 0R, 1R, IBK. It's probably best to use the same classifier within the wrapper to, for example, wrap J48 to select attributes for J48. Of course, the one-off experiments in the Explorer that we've been doing in this lesson, that I've been doing in this lesson, are probably not reliable. And the associated activity will use the experimenter for more repetition and higher reliability. So uh, off you go and do that activity. I think you'll learn quite a lot. And uh, good luck, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.